WikiHow 6 compilation. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash strong dash as dash a dash girl y. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash take dash control dash of dash your dash life dash as dash a dash teenager y. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash smart dash in dash school dash left parenthesis girls y. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash live dash life dash as dash a dash kid y. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash have dash a dash perfect dash life dash as dash a dash teenager y. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash be dash ladylike dash left parenthesis teens. How to be strong as a girl. Download article. Methods. 1. Building physical strength. 2. Building mental strength. 3. Building emotional strength. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Rebecca Tenza, Matt, Ma, LCSW, CCTP, CGCS, CUTP, CCFP. Last updated, the 20th of June, 2024. A strong girl is brave, adventurous, and powerful. She is confident, willing to try new things, and persistent in learning new skills. Method 1. Building physical strength. Download article. It's good to build a strong, capable body as a girl. Get plenty of exercise and focus on what your body can do. 1. Eat from all food groups and stay hydrated. Protein, meat, fish, eggs, nuts, tofu, will help you build muscle mass. Fruits and vegetables will give you the vitamins and minerals you need to stay strong and capable. Fats and desserts also matter for brain and cellular health. Keep a glass of water at your desk, as well as having something to drink with each meal. Multivitamins are great, but they aren't a substitute for fruits and vegetables. 2. Get at least 8 hours of sleep. Your body needs sleep in order to recharge and grow strong. If you wear yourself out, you won't be able to perform well the next day. 3. Take breaks from computer time. Even a two-minute break to stretch your legs is good for your health. Go get a glass of water or some food, take a bathroom break, or hang out with one of your siblings for a little. This will be easier on your eyes, muscles, and mind. 4. Find a form of exercise you enjoy. Exercise will build muscles, as well as supporting your emotional strength. Do you like to hike, run, walk, swim, or jog? Do you prefer to exercise by yourself, or with friends or family? 5. Do strength training. You don't have to lift weights, although this can really help you. Get stronger. You can use your body weight. Do pull-ups, chin-ups, muscle-ups, push-ups, etc. Increase your reps as you get stronger. Always challenge yourself and push yourself to the limit, but make sure you stretch before to avoid getting hurt. Gillian Michaels, fitness trainer and television personality. Feeling strong boosts your well-being. When you're strong physically, it improves your strength in every other facet of your life. You're more confident. Your self-esteem is higher, 
and your self-image is better. 6. Play sports. Any sports, any exercise that works your muscles, will make you stronger. Over time. Soccer, basketball, swimming, gymnastics, and rock climbing are all good ways. To build muscle. Taking gymnastics will improve your physical strength, flexibility, stability, and much more. Only play sports that you find fun and you like. If you don't enjoy group sports, try shooting hoops by yourself or setting and breaking personal goals. Backyard sports can be fun too. Try playing sports informally with friends or family members. You don't have to keep score if you don't want to. 7. Be careful not to overwork yourself. Stretch and warm up before doing sports, and take a minute or two afterwards to cool down by walking or stretching some more. Strength is built up over time, and it's important to respect your body's limits. Method 2. Building mental strength Download article. Your brain is growing and developing in fantastic ways. Challenge yourself and learn. New things to develop a strong mind. 1. Pay attention in school, and do your best. Doing well is about more than talent, it's most important to be a hard worker. Practice studying and working hard at school, and you will grow way ahead as you get older. It's okay if you're not a straight a student. Strong girls can have all kinds of grades, and smarts and talent come in many forms, not just being good at school work. What matters is trying to make the most out of your education. 2. Experiment. You have many years of life ahead of you, and now is a great time to try new ideas. Pick up a book about toy robots, learn to jet ski, make up a cookie recipe, or try out your hand at writing stories. Find out which ideas stick and which ones don't. 3. Read often. Fiction books are fun and insightful, and you can also read non-fiction to learn facts about things you love. Try a variety of genres and figure out which ones you love best. Specialize in your favorite areas, and also read something else every once in a while just to shake things up. If you want to be inspired, read books about female doctors, lawyers, inventors, artists, musicians, political figures, and rocket scientists. You'll see that women can do great things. 1. 4. Foster a love of learning. Curiosity and love of knowledge are important traits in a young woman. Find what subject matters you truly enjoy, check out books from the library, and investigate new ideas. Investigate side areas you love outside of school. Are you interested in robotics, feminism, oil paints, molecular science? 5. Expect failure as part of the path to success. Remember, the expert has failed more times than the beginner has tried. Be prepared to laugh off your mistakes and try again. Real life is different from school. Slip-ups don't wreck your final grade. You get to redo things as many times as you want. 6. Ask others for their ideas. Everyone has different thoughts and opinions, and you can develop more nuanced ideas by listening to other perspectives. Ask your dad to edit your short story. Listen to people who have conflicting opinions. Why do they disagree? What are your thoughts on the issue? Ask your sister to explain her science project to you. Get reading suggestions from a teacher. Method 3. Building Emotional Strength 
Download article. Emotional strength is how well you handle your problems and emotions. An emotionally strong girl is kind and resilient, and she bounces back when life throws problems at her. 1. Embrace who you are. Your identity is important, and you don't have to fight it. It's okay to be tall, chubby, artistic, disabled, geeky, introverted, and anything else you could be. You have your own unique style and personality, and your traits don't make you inferior to anyone else. If you're in a minority group, then it can be healthy to talk to others like you. Maybe you could join an LGBTQ students group or a disability support group. 2. Take time to understand your emotions. Your feelings are important, and it's good to recognize them and find healthy ways to channel them. It's normal to experience a range of emotions, and learning to deal with them is an important part of growing up. If you are angry, try taking a walk, getting exercise, reading, or taking some quiet time to calm down. If you're sad, spend time with a pet or loved one, take good care of your body, and talk to someone about how you're feeling. If you're scared or worried, do something about the thing that scares you, for example making an action plan, take some deep breaths, or tell an adult how you feel. 3. Take time to relax every day. Relaxation is an important part of feeling healthy and balanced, and it'll allow you to stay calm when problems come your way. Do your hobbies, read a fun book, go for a walk, take a relaxing bath, or spend time with someone you love. Screen time can be fun, but it's also good for you to take time away from screens to help you think and process things. 4. Break big problems into little pieces. Sometimes tasks feel overwhelming, to the point that it's difficult to start. When this happens, you can write down the steps you'll need to take, and only do one at a time. For example, if you have to write an essay, write one paragraph now, and then go play with your dog. Taking breaks is an important life skill. It will help keep you from feeling overwhelmed, and you will be able to focus better when you sit down. Again. Write out a schedule if it helps. 5. Learn to ask for help. Part of being strong is recognizing when something is too big for you to face alone. You might want to ask an adult for advice, or get help in solving whatever problem you're facing. Sometimes, you might just need a hug and a listening ear. Recognizing that you need help, and going to ask for it, is a sign of bravery. 6. Recognize that you don't have to be stoic all the time. It's okay to have bad days, and it's okay to be vulnerable. Your strength isn't determined by whether you cry or not, it's about how you bounce back from problems. Plenty of strong people ask for help and need to lean on other people sometimes. 7. Don't listen to bullies. You will find people who dislike you for no good reason, and who like to insult you or try to get in your way. You don't need to listen to them. Being polite is good, but you don't have to stand around putting up with a mean person just for the sake of manners. Say please stop or I'm busy if someone won't leave you alone. If you're being insulted, pretend not to have heard them, or say I'm okay, you're mean. This takes all the fun out of it for the bullies. Tell an adult if handling it yourself doesn't work, or if you don't know what to do. 8. 
Build strong relationships. Think of people you can talk to when you're having a bad day. Parents, friends, siblings, and other people in your life. Take time for those who are important to you. 9. Spend time with people who make you feel better about yourself and the world. Look for friends who are positive, kind, and respectful of other people. These friends can lift you up and help you feel and be your best. 10. Practice kindness. Give sincere compliments, use good manners, help people in need. And reach out to other people who look friendly. An attitude of kindness will draw people to you and help make life easier for you. 11. Recognize your own power. Refuse to let negative stereotypes hold you back. Tell yourself that you can. Practice power posing, recognize that you're skilled. And work on building your own confidence. You are stronger than you know. Try saying an affirmation to yourself in the mirror each morning. Like, I am good enough, I am smart enough, and I can do great things. 2. Read a poll, we asked 604 Wikihow readers about their favorite positive affirmations, and only 8% really like saying, my body is strong in every way. Take pole, while this affirmation can still make you feel good, try saying other phrases like I believe in myself or I am enough. Expert Q&A Question How do you teach a girl to be a woman? Rebecca Tenza, Matt, Ma, LCSW, CCTP, CGCS, CUTP, CCFP Clinical therapist and adjunct professor. Expert answer. It's important that all children feel valued, build self-esteem, and are surrounded by positive reinforcement, and this is especially important for young girls. They need to see women in power, strong and intelligent women of all shapes, backgrounds colors and sizes who are achieving their goals and dreams. Not helpful to helpful 14. Question. How do I recognize my worth? Rebecca Tenza, Matt, Ma, LCSW, CCTP, CGCS, CUTP, CCFP. Clinical therapist and adjunct professor. Expert answer. Females in our society have historically been told they aren't good enough, smart enough or strong enough to do the things that men can. In order to restructure those cognitions and the historical significance behind sexism, we must start at an early age to provide girls with the confidence to do great things. Not helpful 0 helpful 14. Ask a question. Submit Tips Submit a tip All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit Warnings Benching, weightlifting, powerlifting, etc. are all good ways to get stronger. Be relaxed and try not to worry about things too much, sometimes it's good to stay alone. In a peaceful place and just let your stress go. How to take control of your life as a teenager. Download article. Methods. 1. Managing your time. 2. Staying healthy. 3. Staying grounded and well-rounded. Other sections. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Adrian Klapheck, CPCC. Last updated. The 31st of May 2024 approved. Life as a teenager can be chaotic, especially when trying to balance a long day at school. Extracurricular activities, relationships with friends and family, and homework. To gain some control, it's important to manage your time and maintain your health. 
housekeeping. Schoolwork and deadlines organized is essential. It's also key to understand the changes you're going through, as well as how to keep your body energized as it undergoes those changes. Finally, living a well-rounded, balanced life will help you establish healthy habits that'll get you through your teens and keep you in control of your life far into the future. Method 1. Managing your time. Download article. 1. Use a planner. Teens often have to juggle just as many responsibilities as adults. A full school day, an after-school club, practice for a sport, and homework can add up to a 12. 14-hour day, at the very least. A planner will help you keep your schedule organized. 1. Before the start of each week, write down everything that you plan on or need to do. Get to know yourself and how long it takes you to complete various tasks, and set your weekly plan accordingly. Be realistic about what you can actually accomplish in one day to avoid overscheduling. Putting everything on paper will help you order your time, so you can be where you need to be on time, and complete high-priority tasks before less important ones. 2. Make daily to-do lists. Every night, write your next day's to-dos. Use a notebook or an app on your phone or computer if you prefer. Try to complete the all of the items on the list the next day. This will help you put your task in order of importance, and help you develop a sense of commitment. Following through with what you intend to get done will get you far in life. 2. Note any specific chores you might have to do at home, in addition to things you have to get done at school. Write down a handy reminder if you need to ask a friend or teacher something. List your class and activities schedule so you can plan on how much time you need to get from one place or another. 3. Use a calendar. Just as you set weekly and daily goals, use a calendar to help you with longer-term planning. Write important dates on it like tests, sports events, recitals, birthdays, etc. Set long-term personal goals in addition to things you're required to do. 3. Think of one to five things you'd like to accomplish each school term. Like learning a new hobby or, if you're old enough, learning how to drive. Or applying to college. Break down each goal into smaller, regular milestones or steps. Be realistic about your personal goals, don't set yourself up for failure. By saying you'll do something that's out of your reach. Write the steps in your calendar and keep track of your progress to help you develop your long-term planning. Follow this same breaking it down procedure for requirements like tests and papers. 4. Don't procrastinate. Try not to get sidetracked, lose your focus, or put things off until the last minute. If you procrastinate, you leave less time for backup plans, and almost always set yourself up to be overwhelmed. Get in the habit of accomplishing a task on time, and if you say that you're going to do something, then do it. 4. Use your weekly planner, daily to-do list, and long-term calendar to help. You stay on top of your tasks and projects. Ask your friends to help motivate you to get things done instead of tempting you to put something off, and do the same for them. Being proactive and learning early about how to get things done in a timely manner will help you stay in control later on in life, too. Method 2. Staying healthy Download article 1. 
understand the physical and emotional changes you're going through. Your body and mind are transforming themselves. You're full of hormones that make your emotions intense and difficult to regulate. You're constantly in social situations at school and at home that exacerbate those emotions. Taking control of your life also means recognizing what's out of your control, this is an awkward, rocky time in your life. It's important to accept that. 5. The neurological and hormonal changes and developments in your body can make it difficult to control and cope with your emotions. You may feel overwhelmed, confused, and out of control. Know that this is normal, and there are things you can do to help you stay healthy and cope. Understand that adolescence is something everyone goes through, so don't be too critical of yourself. Don't be too concerned about judgment from your peers or from adults. At some point, you will look silly, say something awkward, trip and fall. And so on, it's part of the deal. 2. Eat right. Growing and developing take lots of energy, and getting through a packed schedule demands even more. It's essential to eat a well-balanced diet to fuel your growth and productivity. Never skip any meals, and always make sure to eat breakfast to get your day going on a full tank. 6. Half of what you eat should be fruits and veggies. Balance the rest of your diet out with whole grains, like whole grain bread, brown rice, or oatmeal, and lean proteins, like turkey, chicken, seafood, and eggs. Talk to your doctor to learn more about your specific dietary needs. There's no right number of calories to eat, and no universal portion size for everyone. If you're a very active boy, you'll need to eat more than a less active girl. Get to know your body's needs and take this time while you're young to establish long-lasting healthy habits. 7. Teens should not go on weight loss diets or try to lose weight by eating. Less and less recommended by your doctor. 8. 3. Learn to cope with stress and manage your emotions. Your teenage years are a tumultuous time, and there will be times when you feel stressed and overwhelmed. Learning healthy, productive ways to deal with your emotions will not only help you take control of your life as a teenager, it will also set you up for success as an adult. When you find yourself getting upset, try asking yourself the following questions, what am I reacting to? What about this is making me so upset? Is this a fact or just an opinion? Am I jumping to conclusions? Am I putting more importance on this than it actually deserves? Will this be important in six months? Communicate assertively. Many people wrongly think assertive means aggressive. Being assertive means you clearly and respectfully express your wants and needs and that you listen and honor the opinions of others as well. Don't expect anyone to know what you want or need, if you need some space, simply ask for it. Say something like, I'm feeling really stressed and overwhelmed right now. I need to just go to my room and be alone for a little while. Learn to breathe deeply. Feeling overwhelmed may trigger your sympathetic nervous system known as your fight-or-flight response. You can counteract this with diaphragmatic breathing, in which you breathe deeply into your belly. Place your hand on your stomach and feel your belly rise as you inhale for a count of five. Hold for a moment, then exhale for another five seconds. 
Do this until you begin to feel calm. Journaling is a great way to work through your emotions and vent. Try free writing three pages in a notebook every day. Don't worry about spelling, grammar, making sense, or even being fair. Just let loose with whatever is going through your mind at that moment, just be sure to keep this journal private. Find ways to reduce your stress. Running, meditation, doing something creative, going for a bike ride, playing video games, shopping. Whatever positive activity makes you feel better and less stressed, give yourself permission to enjoy it. 4. Get plenty of sleep. Most teens do not get the recommended amount of sleep, which is at least 9 to 10 hours a night. Remember, those changes your body is going through. Take a lot of energy, and you need to rest to recover. It's okay for teens to sleep late on the weekends, so remind your parents that your oversleeping is not a sign of laziness, but something that's necessary for your body. 9. Try to go to bed and wake up at regular times. Develop a sleeping routine. Don't stare at your phone or computer right before going to bed, and try to listen to relaxing music or read a book to create a good sleep environment. 5. Exercise and stay in shape. Being active every day can help you gain control over your changing body, keep a positive mindset, and helps you to simply have fun. It's Recommended that teens be active for at least 60 combined minutes a day, whether through physical education or gym class, participating in a sport, or riding a bike. 10. Get active outside to help cut down on your screen time or the time you spend on your phone, computer, or watching television. Try to make exercise a social activity, or a way of having fun with friends. Method. 3. Staying grounded and well-rounded. Download article. 1. Decide what your priorities and values are. 11. You have to set priorities in terms of the tasks you accomplish, but you also have to prioritize your values in order to take control over your life. Decide what kind of person you want to be, and make good. Conscious choices that'll keep you in control of your life now and well into the future. Ask yourself questions such as, 12. What are positive personal qualities, like loyalty, generosity, honesty, being funny, kindness, and so on, that are most important to me? What kind of an attitude do I want to have? Do I want to be a positive person who loves life? How can I make that attitude a real thing through my daily choices? If I drink, smoke, or take drugs, what will the consequences be for my health, well-being, and personal character? How do I want to express myself through the clothes I wear? The words I say, how I treat people, the activities I do, and the quality of my work. 2. Don't overburden yourself. Don't be afraid to say no. You might be faced with pressure. To pack your free time with extracurricular activities to good on college applications, but understand that school and homework will give you a full 8-hour day on their own. Know yourself and know what's too much for you to maintain your productivity and sanity. 13. For example, you might really like to sing and love playing soccer. If you try to do choir and play soccer at the same time, you could burn yourself out or perform poorly in both. Play soccer, then when the season's over, see if you can join the choir. 
Ask yourself if taking the time for any after-school activity or job will hurt your performance in the classroom. Your schoolwork should always be your top priority. 3. Ask for help. 14. There will be many times in your teenage years when you feel overwhelmed or need advice. Ask your parents, other trusted adults, and friends to help you. Ask them to remind you of important events and to keep track of your responsibilities. 15. Don't put all your faith into other people, and don't shirk your responsibilities, but never be afraid to ask for help or advice. Keep your parents up to date about what you have due. Say, hey, I have this big test coming up in three weeks. Could you help me make sure I study for it? Maybe you could quiz me leading up to the test date. 4. Become independent. Sometimes it's tough for your parents to accept that you're growing up, and they end up taking away your sense of having control over your life. Try to understand that they mainly act out of love and a need to protect you. It's important. However, to communicate to them that you are becoming responsible and independent. The key is to let them get to know you as a young adult. 16. Try spending more time out and about with your parents, like going to the mall or to stores together, out to eat, and other activities you'd normally do with friends. Show to them first and how you act in the outside world that you can take care of yourself in a mature way. Don't tell them that a friend's parents let them do something that you're not allowed to do. You won't get anywhere with that argument, and you'll just end up insulting their parenting style. Instead, tell them in a calm, clear way how their overprotective nature makes you feel and try to compromise with them. Try writing a letter, sometimes we can express ourselves more clearly. By writing, jot your feelings down, let your parents give the note a read, and then have a mature discussion with them. When you do go out with friends, stay in communication with your parents. Keep them in the loop so they worry less when you're out and about and they'll be more likely to give you more breathing room with time. 5. Balance being a young adult with being a kid. Being a teenager involves gaining independence and freedom, and it's a strange in-between time for both you and your parents. You have to respect your parents' authority, but you can also remind them that you're growing and developing your own values and opinions. It's important for everyone to be patient and use respectful language. 17. Respect your household's rules and family's traditions. Your parents still lay down the law, and it's important to show them. You care about the way they've decided to raise you. Be clear and calm when you're talking to your parents if you want them to respect your point of view. Mom, let me go out with my friends. Is less likely to get a positive response than saying, Mom, can I go to the mall with Stacy and Jill? Jill's mom would drive us there and bring us back home at 8. That will leave me. Enough time to finish my homework before bed. Negotiation. Clarity and specifics are key. How to be smart in school, girls. Download article. Parts. 1. Being smart in school. 2. Studying. 3. Making yourself smarter. Plus show one more. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Alicia Oglisby. Last updated, 
the 24th of June, 2024 approved. Have you always been the one with a low score on every subject? Have you always been regarded as the dumb one? Well, if you want to improve your grades and test scores, then read on from step 1 below to be smarter in school. Better grades in high school can lead to a good college or university, which can lead to a good job, which can lead to a healthy and comfortable life. Quick Steps Pay attention and participate in class. Take good notes during lectures and presentations. Complete your homework and assignments on time. Use a planner to keep track of assignments and tests. Study thoroughly before tests. Part 1. Being smart in school. Download article. 1. Do your assignments. Most people don't like getting homework, but it has an important purpose. Homework helps you review a lesson while the information is still fresh in your mind. It also lets your teacher know if you understand the concepts or need more help. 2. Take neat and tidy notes in every class. Note-taking is a lot of work, but in the long run, it pays off. Writing stuff down in and of itself helps you remember it better. And when the test rolls around, you will have plenty of material to study from. 1. Focus on vocabulary when taking notes. Knowing the definitions of Different terms in your classes is always helpful. Sometimes teachers might give you extra credit, merits or points. 3-3. Three, three. Clear your mind and focus on the teacher. Focusing on the teacher will not only allow you to learn the subject, but if you don't listen to the teacher, you might risk not knowing how to study for an upcoming test. 4-4. Four, four. Turn in your assignments on time. If you turn in your assignments on time, your teachers will appreciate it. Also, some teachers don't accept late work, so you might lose points. Try doing the assignment as soon as possible. Don't procrastinate until the last minute. The assignment will not receive a good grade. Part 2. Studying. Download article. 1. Study your textbook and notes. This is especially important for any subject you have a difficult time with. Bring your textbook home at night and go over previous lessons for the test, and maybe the next lesson, as well. If you study every night, you will be fully ready for any test you face. 2. Use flashcards when you study. Flashcards are useful for geography, spelling, vocabulary, math, etc. Have someone quiz you or use them to quiz yourself. That way, you can build up your knowledge so it will stay with you. 3. Keep a planner to keep track of your assignment. Write down your assignments, due dates, test dates, and so on. That way you can stay organized and won't have to worry about forgetting anything. Part 3. Making yourself smarter. Download article. 1. Read every night. Reading is helpful for people of all ages, it helps you learn vocabulary spelling, and grammar while expanding your mind to new ideas. Challenge yourself to read a variety of materials such as classics, non-fiction, autobiographies and things outside typical school reading lists. If your school has a library, you should take some time at lunch or break to go there and just read some books to exercise your mind before class. 2. Bring your reading book home to study. 
If you need to write a book report or essay on it later on, it will be much easier if you write down notes while reading. Post-it notes are helpful for marking important pages for later reference. 3. Do further research. After you get home from school and finish your normal homework, why not look into what you learn it during the day? Look for newspaper or online articles, essays, and informational books. Look for worksheets or quizzes as well. Taking some notes is a good idea. Try to learn something new every day. For instance, you could research a different math term every day, or a new vocabulary word. Try subscribing to a word per day website, one that suits your age group. That way you will receive a new word on Twitter or through email every day. Try to research something for each class, for instance, you could research dichotomous keys for science and composers for music. For literature, you could study poets, and for history, you could research different historical periods. For Keep yourself informed on current events. Read the newspaper and watch the news. This will be helpful in any politics or social studies classes, and it will also help you gain a deeper understanding of the world we live in. Playing an instrument might not have socializing involved, but it will also help expand your mind. 5. Write stories or keep a diary in your spare time. This will help you practice grammar, syntax, and creative writing in general. If you dedicate time to writing, your teachers will notice. 6. Do some science experiments at home and show your teacher. Examples include a papermush volcano, a sundial, or salt crystals. This will impress them, and maybe earn you some extra credit. Part 4. Keeping your relationships. Download article. 1. Be on good terms with your teachers. Teachers are there to help you. Be nice and respectful to your teacher. Show them that you're serious about your education, pay. Attention in class, raise your hand, ask questions when you're confused, participate in classroom discussions, and so on. Let them see that you are engaged in the subject. Ask them if there's anything you should work on. And if you need help, ask them for it. 2. Join extracurricular clubs. Studious clubs such as debate journalism, chess, and math will put you in an academic mindset. You will become more well-rounded and get more familiar with the activities that you enjoy. They are also a great way to meet and befriend like-minded individuals who can teach you lots of new things. 3. Keep it balanced. You need a social life and some fun to be healthy and happy. Everyone needs a break once in a while. Hang out with your friends and spend quality time with your family. Being smart doesn't mean you can't have fun. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit. Read a videos. Submit a video tip. Share a quick video tip and help bring articles to life with your friendly advice. Your Insights could make a real difference and help millions of people. Submit a video. Tips. Don't worry about getting into a romantic relationship. You'll have plenty of time for that. In college and beyond, at a younger age, romance tends to distract and cause drama. Give. Yourself time to grow and mature. Also, you can get into breakups and that can sometimes lower your grades. 
try to get 8 to 10 hours of sleep every night. The adequate rest will help you stay focused and energized during the day. Be healthy, as it can really improve your grades. Eat nutritiously and have three meals a day. Show more tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. If you are being bullied, you should tell your parents or your teachers. If you struggle, don't worry. Just ask an adult to help you. If your teacher is mean, just pay attention in class and do your work. You could also read how to deal with a mean teacher. How to live life as a kid. Download article. Co-authored by Hannah Madden. Last updated, the 21st of June, 2024 references. No matter what adults say. Being a child can be tough. You only have a few years of experience, and yet you need to navigate in a huge world full of incredible and scary things. This article will offer you some guidance so that you have a better shot at having a full, happy, healthy, and successful childhood. 1. Make good friends. Download article. Talk to new people and see if you have anything in common. It's fine. To stay friends with children you've known forever, but really try to. Branch out and make a few friends of all different kinds. You can play at. Each other's houses, play outside together, or play during school. 1. It can be tough to make new friends, especially if you don't know anyone yet. When in doubt, walk up to another child who's standing alone and introduce yourself. Say something like, Hi, my name's Elliot. What's yours? 2. Accept other people. Download article. Try not to judge anyone for things they can't control. If you see someone who's different than you, it doesn't mean anything bad. People come in all shapes and sizes, and that should be celebrated. 2. As you grow up, you might see children bullying other children for the way they look, act, or dress. Bullying is wrong on so many levels, so you should tell a trusted adult about it straight away. Say something like, Yesterday, I found a few people making fun of my friend Ralph at recess because of his asthma. I had no idea what to do. Except tell you, Mrs. Elderson. 3. Be kind to others. Download article. Try your hardest to be kind to other children, when you're kind to people, they're usually kind back. A simple hey can really make someone's day better. Even if you don't know the person, you should still try to be kind to them. 3. For instance, maybe there's a child in your school who always eats lunch alone. You could invite them to eat lunch at your table and see if you two can become friends. 4. Be yourself. Download article. Don't change yourself to fit in with anyone else. It can be tempting to try to make new friends by pretending you have the same interests. However, it won't be very fun in the long run. Try to stay true to who you are, even if it seems hard. 4. Children are sometimes tempted to fit in with the popular people by pretending to be what they're not. If you ignore of your real interests just to hang out with certain people, you won't have any real fun together. If you are considered to be the most popular boy forward slash girl within your class, take advantage of it for the right reasons, 
for example, if you suggest going to the aquarium. For a class field trip. 5. Do stuff that you like to do. Download article. What's your favorite thing to do on the weekends? Try to do it as often as you can. When you're a child, you have a lot more time to do fun stuff and a lot less responsibilities to take care of. As long as it's something harmless and fun, go for it. 5. Maybe you like collecting and reading comic books. Making art, playing practical jokes forward slash telling jokes, watching cartoons, or either going swimming or sailing. 6. Try new things. Download article. Branch out your interests at least a bit. It can be scary to try new things, but you might find something you really like. From foods to activities to friendships, keep an open mind about stuff so you don't get too boxed in. 6. If your father makes something new for dinner, give it a taste before you say if you like it or not. If your friend wants to play a new video game, try it out for a few minutes to see if it's fun or not. 7. Have a lot of fun. Download article. You're a child, so focus on being happy. If you ever feel stressed or bummed out, talk to your parents or a trusted adult about it. You're only young once, so try to make the most of your time by living life the way you want to live, but don't feel like you have to do something every day. Children are relaxed and tolerant, so try to adopt that attitude into your mindset. 7. Expert Tip Mosh Ratson, MFT, PCC Marriage and Family Therapist The happier you feel, the better of a family member you'll be. Take Time to prioritize yourself and do things that you enjoy. When you do Things that revitalize you, you'll be more equipped to make your home a Happy place 8. Try hard in school Download article It might not be fun, but it's important. Even when you're a child, you should try really hard in all of your classes. If you're struggling with a subject or an assignment, ask your parents or your teacher to help you out. 8. If you're really stuck on a subject, you could even ask your parents to hire you a tutor. 9. Look on the bright side of things. Download article. Keep a positive attitude about your life. Even if something bad happens to you, there might be a good thing tucked away in there that you can't quite see yet. If you catch yourself getting down, try to think of at least one good thing that's going to happen. 9. For example, maybe your friend is moving to another state and you won't get to see them as often. The good news is that they live near a beach now, so you can go visit them in the summer and play in the ocean. 10. Be proud of yourself. Download article. Everyone has stuff that they're good at. If you're ever feeling down about yourself, try making a list of what you can do well. Try taking a peek at that list any time you're feeling bummed out. 10. Maybe you're good at writing, or video games, or picking out outfits, or being kind, gentle, and compassionate towards others. If you're feeling stuck, try asking your friends or parents what you're good at. Sometimes, other people recognize stuff we're good at before we do. 11. Listen to your guardian, s. Download article. Most of the time, they know best. 
It might not seem like it right now. But the adults in your life usually have your best interests at heart. Try to always listen to what your parents have to say, even if you don't quite understand it now. 11. If you don't understand a rule, try asking your parents to explain it. You can be easygoing and respectful by saying, I don't quite get why I have to do that. Can you tell me? Community Q&A Question I am 11 years old I really want hair extensions I feel ugly with short hair I'm scared of everything I'm shy and I can't do math what should I do and I really want to be a dancer but can't take classes. Cause I feel it makes me pathetic and I'm not good at anything. Judge style. Community answer. This sounds a lot like how I was at 11, and a few years later I was. Diagnosed with depression. You should probably tell an adult, like your. Parents, about how you feel bad about yourself and they can get you. Help. Not helpful 9 helpful 65. Question. I'm 10 years old and I find life tough with everything in the way. I. Don't have any friends. Is there any way that I can study hard and. Not focus so much on video games. I try, but I can't resist them. Community answer. Set a time limit on how long you can play video games in a day. Don't do. You're studying in the same room as your video games. Don't start. Playing video games after school until you've finished your homework. And forward slash or feel confident for any tests you have coming up. Remember why. You want to do well in school when it seems hard to stay focused. Try to. Step out of your comfort zone at school and talk to some new people. Just say hi and see where it goes. You never know who could be a good friend. Not helpful for helpful 41. Question. I'm 11 years old. I want to start a diary, but I'm scared that people will make fun of me and will stop being my friend. What can I do? Community answer. If it's that bad, try to keep it hidden. If you have siblings, try to hide it. Really well. Oh, and anyone who would stop being your friend just. Because you keep a diary isn't worth having as a friend. Not helpful for helpful 46. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Children often want to grow up super fast. When you're older, though. You might wish you were a kid again. Try to appreciate what you're doing right now before it's gone. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to have a perfect life as a teenager. Download article. Methods. 1. Finding perfection in everyday life. 2. Adopting a happy, healthy lifestyle. 3. Planning for your future. Other sections. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by IA Israel. Last updated, the 8th of March, 2024 approved. Perfection is something everyone strives for but no one really reaches. With the right mindset, however, you'll realize that this is a good thing. Being a teenager is difficult, as many people expect you to be perfect in many different things school, sports, chores, etc. Striving for total perfection is a good way to push yourself to become the best adult. You can be. However, you should remember that, in the end, true perfection is impossible. 
What really matters is trying to be better, and having the confidence to pursue your dreams. Method 1. Finding perfection in everyday life. Download article. 1. Write down what perfection means to you. This includes goals, living arrangements, etc. Actual perfection, when nothing ever goes wrong and everything is amazing, is not possible. But you can get close by paying attention to your hopes and desires, striving to better yourself, and enjoying the present moment. When you envision your perfect day, what do you see? Who is there, what are you doing, and where are you? Focus on things in your control, like your studies, career goals, and lifestyle. Think of people whose lives you admire. What about their life appeals to you? There is no right way to live a perfect life, so don't try and imitate anyone else. Instead, follow your own passions, dreams, and desires. 1. 2. Make time to help others. Volunteering, tutoring a friend, and helping your parents. Around the house aren't just nice things to do, they can improve your own well. Being. 2. Doing good makes you feel good and it builds a loving, supportive network of people around you that will help if your own life ever gets tough. Make your life about more than just you and the feeling of perfection will creep one step closer. 3. Look at schooling as a chance to grow and learn, not a forced chore. Education is, and always will be, the easiest way to make something of your life. Through education, you improve your job prospects your ability to think and reason in any situation, and your general knowledge on a variety of subjects. School, however, often makes it difficult to truly enjoy learning, turning it instead into a stressful chore you must slog through. However, by reframing school as a chance for a free education, enjoying the learning, purely for leaning sake, you can find new motivation to study and grow with or without a teacher. The old adage, knowledge is power could not be true. It doesn't matter what you do in life, the ability to learn and hold knowledge will help you be successful and happy. The way to accept challenges in life is to see them as learning opportunities and potential moments for growing. It depends on your underlying belief system and your way of looking at things. Some people try to overcome challenges. After they overcome them, they feel they have accomplished something. 4. Give yourself some me time each day. You are busy, and it often feels like people need teenagers to do 8,000 things every 24 hours. But you need to put your own happiness first sometimes in order to do your very best work. Each day, take 15 minutes or more to yourself. You could read, listen to music, go for a walk, or simply lay in bed and count the stars on your ceiling. Distance yourself from other people, if only for a few moments, and relax. As you do, let your brain stray from all the stresses that hit you each day. Just enjoy the moment and think about yourself. 3. This is one of the easiest, best ways to tune into yourself and your goals. Try meditation for 15 minutes a day. It's been proven to aid mental, social, and physical health. 4. 5. Enjoy the present moment, even when things are hard. Being a teenager is not easy. You are expected to excel in school, prepare for your future, join a few clubs, help with chores, and still be a kid and have some fun, all while undergoing profound mental and 
physical changes. But being a teenager can also be a blast you get to spend all day at school with friends, avoid most responsibility to pay bills or put food on the table, and get the chance to shape your life and future unlike any prior time in your life. So, especially when times are tough, take some time to enjoy the present moment. Take a deep breath and ground yourself in the here and now. You're young, and the whole world is in front of you. Even more importantly, you have the ability, right now, to make it perfect. Remember, being a teenager doesn't mean you can't be a kid still. Have some fun, break a rule or two, and kick back and relax. Enjoy life. As important as your teenage years are, they aren't everything. Everyone makes mistakes, loses sight of goals, and takes a few wrong turns in their teenage years. There is very little you can do now to ruin the rest of your life no matter how bad things seem. 5. 6. Reframe negative thoughts and experiences as positives. No one can completely escape bad thoughts or events, and that is okay. Instead of wallowing in them, find ways to think of them as positives. For example, you may fail a test in chemistry, an event that doesn't seem to have any upside. However, this failure tells you something useful about your study habits, the skills you still need to work on, and potentially something about your enjoyment and engagement in chemistry. You can use this failure to make you a better student and person. Avoid damaging or hurtful language in your own head. Don't say, everyone hates me when you know that this isn't true of your friends and family. Don't say mom will kill me if I fail when you know deep down that she'll love you nonetheless. 6. 7. Remember that life isn't perfect and that is a good thing. No life is ever perfect. There will always be mistakes, setbacks, misunderstandings, and plain bad luck. But, these issues are all chances to improve yourself, and how you react to the bad times is far more important than the bad times themselves. Acknowledge that your life will never be perfect but that you can get a little bit closer each time you overcome trouble or hardship. When something bad happens, keep your cool and think how can I handle this. Avoid blaming yourself or others, lashing out, or wallowing in self-pity. Pick yourself up, find a solution, and think of ways to prevent a similar issue from occurring later in life. 7. Method 2. Adopting a happy, healthy lifestyle Download article 1. Be open and approachable to find a wide-ranging group of friends. Popularity is not some elusive, impossible goal that only the cool kids can attain. Being popular is just about having friends and acquaintances and all this really requires is a kind heart and open mind. Say hello to your classmates, and ask people how they're doing if they feel down. Never reject a potential friendship based on someone's outward appearances or hobbies, as you'll find that most people are friendly if you give them the chance. That said, you should accept that not everyone will be your friend. This isn't your fault, it is their decision. Simply move on, continuing to be polite and friendly, and know that there are many, many more people in the world. 2. Follow a fitness plan. You don't need to be super skinny in order to be healthy. Regular exercise is proven to enhance your concentration, well-being, and happiness.
and you don't have to do grueling solitary runs to get the benefit. Go for a swim, ride your bike, play a sport, or take a few hikes. You can even adapt many of your hobbies into exercises such as taking photography walks or listening to a new album every time you hit the gym. In general, you should aim for 30 minutes of exercise a day. Grabbing an exercise buddy makes exercise more enjoyable, and it is easier to stick to your schedule. 8. 3. Eat healthy foods. A healthy diet promotes a healthy head of hair, nails, skin, muscles, and mind. Teenagers have fast metabolisms that allow them to eat almost anything without major weight shifts but a healthy diet will give you greater energy, focus, and general well-being no matter what age you are. Of course, the occasional treat is acceptable, but you will be surprised how much better you feel on a better diet overall. A healthy diet includes regular meals, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner, every single day. At least three to four fruits and vegetables a day. The vitamins and minerals in fresh produce are essential for a developing brain and body. Lean proteins like chicken, fish, eggs, and beans. Eating slowly. Wait 10 minutes before getting seconds, as it takes your body time to realize that it is full. This will eliminate overeating. Cutting back on fast food, sugary sodas and candies, and fatty foods like pizza and fried options. 4. Keep your room and space organized to keep your brain organized. Do things on time, and never ever leave your room messy. If you're happy and organizes at home, the happiness will be reflected everywhere else in your life. Moreover. Research has shown that an organized and clean physical environment can help you defeat stress and feel more in control mentally as well. 9. Take 10 to 15 minutes once a week to relax, put on some music, and tidy up. If you just do a little a week it will keep you ahead of the dreaded deep clean. 5. Spend a little time each day expanding your mind. Read books, check out the news. And make an effort to see the movies, plays, and events that appeal to you. One of the best parts of being a teenager is the feeling of constant growth that comes with being young. The best way to keep this feeling alive is to expose yourself to as much new material as possible. Teachers and school are great for this, but you should also follow your own passions. Where does your mind lead you? This is often the stuff that will make you happiest. It can also open the doors for your future and show you potential careers or goals for life. 10. Method 3. Planning for your future Download article. 1. Sketch out your goals for adult life. What would you love to do for a living? Where would you like to live? What hobbies would you like to pursue? You don't need definitive answers for any of these questions, but this is a good way to get the ball rolling and help. You find ways to prepare and train for adulthood. Brainstorm what you want life to look like when you're 20, 30, and 50. Note what things are important to you, and know that there are absolutely no wrong answers. You may want to be living easy in a beautiful location, or working hard in the bustling big city, it doesn't matter. Having an idea of your Goals and dreams for the future helps you make the most of the present. If you're having trouble, think about all of the things you don't want to do. 
This can reveal your real passions. 14. 2. Make a series of goals to help reach your dreams. Perfection only comes one small step at a time. You will not become the most popular kid at school, the best soccer player, or an award-winning filmmaker overnight, but you can start taking steps now to make these goals a reality. Start with your end goal, then work backward. What do you have to accomplish to get there? For example, if you wanted to be a professional soccer player, sign with a professional team or club, play high-level college soccer, get recruited to a college soccer team, succeed on a competitive youth team, train for your tryouts, improve your shooting, passing, opposite foot, and fitness. Talk with current coaches and players about skills you still need to learn to become a pro in 10 years. 3. Take the time to focus on your own dreams and goals. Being a teenager is hard. You have a lot of people coaches, parents, teachers who all have different plans and ideas for your future. There is so much advice being shoved at you that it is hard to listen to. The one person who knows you best, you, as much as possible, schedule time in your life. To pursue your own passions, whether that includes finishing all of the Game of Thrones books or coding your own app. Let people know your goals and ask them for their support. Oftentimes, Adults don't realize what you want to do and compensate by telling you what they think you should be doing. Take pride in your plans and let people now so that they can help you. 4. Talk to adults in your potential field or profession. This is a great way to get an idea about what you need to do in order to make your dreams come true. It also helps you. Find out the realities of the job you hope to have, which may or may not influence how you feel about it. If you don't know anyone in your chosen field, fire off some emails to magazines or companies that do what you love and ask if they would be willing to answer any questions. Colleges and universities are other great places to get in touch with people with experience in your field. Some questions to ask include What is a typical day in your job like? What do you like about work? What would you change? If you could give yourself any advice when you were my age, what would it be? 5. Accept and embrace that your goals may change. One of the biggest burdens on a teenager's mind is the worry that they have to plan their entire lives now or they will fail in the future. Nothing can be further from the truth. History is filled with stories of people who ended up in wildly different places than where they started, and you shouldn't stress yourself out planning a perfect future when chances are good your desires will change. Just work on being happy, expanding your mind, and sticking to your passions. The success will come, and the doors will open. 12. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. It is cliché advice, but the easiest way to be perfect is to be yourself. Do things for you. Not for others, and this self-confidence and personal pride will help you succeed in many Fields and Endeavors How to be ladylike, teens Download article Parts 1. Loving and taking care of yourself 2. Treating others with respect and dignity 3. Practicing kindness and courteousness Other sections Tips and warnings Related articles References Reviewed by Tammy Clater Last updated, 
the 23rd of April, 2024 approved. What it means to act like a lady is decided by society, meaning that how to act ladylike will change as society's views about femininity evolve. But there are a few ladylike characteristics that will always be important because they are widely admired. Qualities that all good people share, such as kindness and integrity, grace and style, and respecting yourself and others. In general then, being ladylike really just means being a decent and courteous person and treating yourself and others well. Part 1. Loving and taking care of yourself. Download article. 1. Practice healthy habits and good hygiene. Caring for yourself can be as simple as eating well, exercising regularly, looking after your body, and getting enough sleep every night. Not only will you stay healthy and fit, but you'll also be alert and ready for anything. Proper hygiene is also essential for good health, and it will make you feel better about yourself. Shower daily, keep your hair clean, floss every day, and brush your teeth at least twice a day. Keep your nails trimmed and clean. You don't have to go overboard with the lotions, creams, exfoliants, and other beauty products, either a good bar of soap, face cloth, and moisturizer can go a long way. Eat a healthy breakfast. This is especially important for younger children and adolescents, because it gives you energy for the day, and leads to better academic and athletic performance. 1. It's okay to indulge in junk food once in a while, but overall, strive to make healthy food choices. Exercise in the morning. It may be difficult at first, but your body will adjust. Morning workouts kickstart your metabolism and give you a rush of endorphins that will improve your mood, wake you up, and help you focus. Teens and young adults require between 7 and 10 hours of sleep per night, so don't sacrifice rest on account of friends, work, or anything else. 2. Be mature and seek balance. Sophistication and maturity come from being independent, self-confident, and in control. You've probably heard the saying, everything in moderation and this applies to all aspects of life. Life is all about finding a balance between things you like and those you must do, things you should do and those you shouldn't and things that are fun and those that are necessary. Give yourself the same opportunities as everyone else, by educating yourself and staying in school. Setting goals, and having expectations of yourself and others, but enjoy life along the way. As well. The decision to wear cosmetics is yours alone, but if you choose to, use Tones and colors that complement and highlight your natural beauty. And remember that less is more. Wearing or not wearing makeup doesn't make you any more or less of a lady. The same holds true for jewelry and accessories. Working hard is important, but it's equally important to relax and have fun. An intelligent and mature lady knows when to take time for herself. 3. Treat yourself with dignity and respect. Loving and respecting yourself means appreciating that you are unique and being true to yourself. Don't compromise your values for someone else, and don't try to change who you are to impress anyone. B. Confident in who you are and people will be drawn to your strength. Learn how to say no and don't be afraid to say it if you aren't comfortable with something. Peer pressure is a strong force, but 
Resisting the temptation to do something just to fit in is all part of knowing who you are and sticking to your guns. 4. Dress to impress yourself. Life is going to throw many dress codes at you, and school, work, clubs, meetings, and other places will all have different expectations regarding clothing. The important thing is to dress in a way that makes you comfortable. Part of showing self-respect and self-confidence is dressing for yourself and in a way that shows your personality, not dressing immodestly or wearing revealing clothes to just gain attention from others. 2. Clothing doesn't have any intrinsic value, but it can make you feel confident, smart, and powerful. Clothes should always be clean, neat, and pressed if necessary. Well-made garments in high-quality fabrics are an investment, but they will last longer and make more of an impression. Neutral and pastel colors are timeless and won't go out of fashion. Expert tip Elena LeBlanc Personal stylist Put effort into developing your personal style. Identify what's missing in your closet and cure it a wardrobe that reflects your personality. Beyond just understanding aesthetics, educate yourself on clothing quality and construction. Curating your style intentionally will be both fulfilling and confidence boosting. Part 2. Treating others with respect and dignity. Download article. 1. Be accepting and tolerant. You don't have to share everyone else's values or traditions. But strive to recognize and accept the differences that make people unique. Be tolerant of other people's customs and lifestyles and they will do the same for you. People come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors, and have many backgrounds and beliefs, but for Every difference there is also a commonality. Acceptance and tolerance are all about appreciating what makes us individual, and not disliking someone else just because she's different. Have the courage to stand up against intolerance and oppression. This can come in the form of racism, sexism, ageism, religious intolerance, or any other form of bigotry. Let people know if they are acting unfairly or being prejudiced, and encourage them to be more open. Write letters or use social media to alert the government, newspapers, businesses, or human rights groups about unjust practices or policies. Don't judge others before you get to know them, and try not to make assumptions. If you are curious about someone, ask her a question. She may not be comfortable answering you, especially if you are strangers. But asking won't hurt, and she'll appreciate your effort. Promote peace by offering to moderate discussions if you see friends or classmates arguing. A moderator helps people communicate more effectively by ensuring speakers get their turns and aren't interrupted, and making sure things don't get too heated. 2. Don't be insulting or offensive. Nobody likes a rude or insulting person. Stick with the old adage, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If somebody is rude to you, the classiest thing you can do is walk away. Tell her you don't appreciate her behavior, but don't provoke her further or dignify her behavior by returning it. Don't make fun of others, and don't laugh at the expense of someone else's feelings. Avoid cursing and telling offensive jokes. Avoid jokes that poke fun at others because of culture, appearance, sex sexual orientation, or other personal matters. Be sensitive to the needs of others, and don't deliberately make others 
uncomfortable. For instance, if your friend is extremely shy, don't put her on the spot as the center of attention, because she'll be embarrassed. 3. Respect other people. You can show respect for others by being considerate of their feelings, and by being honest, open, and fair. This tells them that you care, that you are a good person, and that you are deserving of their respect. And this doesn't just apply to parents, teachers, and people older than you. Everyone deserves respect, the elderly and the young, and you can provide it by being polite, courteous, and trustworthy. One of the easiest ways to show respect is by respecting someone else's time and being punctual. Address people with the proper titles of respect, such as Mr. and Miss. Keep your promises. 4. Give others your full attention during a discussion. Practice active listening by paying attention to what people say and striving to understand what they mean. 3. People aren't always up front with their feelings or intentions and it's okay to ask for clarification if you're unsure. During a conversation with someone, put your phone away and give her your undivided attention. Make eye contact, and acknowledge what she says. Be aware of your body language. Crossed arms indicate guardedness. Practice keeping your arms naturally at your sides. Don't interrupt, you'll get your turn. And once you've made your point, give her a chance to respond. Show you are engaged and interested. You can do this by not making everything about yourself, and not trying to outdo her stories. It also helps to smile when appropriate and react with subtle facial expressions. 5. Be honest and humble. Don't brag about things you have, like friends or money, because it is boastful. Similarly, avoid talking about all the great things you've done, because it will make people uncomfortable. People say that honesty is the best policy, and this is true when it comes to friends, family, co-workers, fellow students, and everyone else in your life. Lying is rude disrespectful, and embarrassing when you get caught, so the truth is always a better option. Part 3. Practicing Kindness and Courteousness Download Article 1. Be polite and gracious. Courtesy isn't always something that people detect, but they certainly take notice when it's lacking. Manners and etiquette are important in all parts of life, whether you're at school, work, out to dinner with friends, in a business meeting, or even just on the phone. Being polite tells somebody that you are respectful and considerate. Enroll yourself in an etiquette class if you feel you are lacking in this department. Hold the door for people. Remember the names of new people you meet. Call them by their names. When you address them. When you are first introduced to a new person. Repeat her name to yourself three times if you have trouble. Remembering names. Don't participate in gossip. 2. Greet and acknowledge people. Introduce yourself to new people, and make. Introductions for people who don't know each other but with whom you are acquainted. Don't be afraid to make the first move with a new person in a social setting. Chances are, she might be too shy to come up to you, and she'll appreciate that you had the courage to approach her. Compliments are a great way to start a conversation. Tell her you like her boots, or her hair or her shirt, or say something else nice about her. Ask her something about herself to get the ball rolling. When appropriate, 
reciprocate and tell her something personal, but not overly intimate, about yourself so that it feels like a conversation and not an interrogation. Steer clear of sensitive topics like religion and politics. Start with small talk and keep the conversation light. 3. Say please, thank you, good job, and sorry. If you ask someone for a favor, say please. Even if you're just asking her to pass the pepper. When she does, say thank you. It's sweet, simple, and goes a long way to show appreciation. Congratulate people when they accomplish their goals, because everyone likes being recognized for hard work. If you make a mistake, don't be afraid to apologize. You don't have to apologize for every little thing, but a simple I'm sorry when you're wrong can mend relationships, and shows others that you care about their feelings, and that you are strong enough to admit when you're wrong. Be genuine when you express gratitude and compliments. People will pick up on your insincerity if you say things without meaning them. 4. Practice good table manners. Table etiquette can be quite complicated, especially in a fine dining establishment with multiple courses that require numerous utensils. But every meal deserves the respect of some basic etiquette, and the ground rules include chew with your mouth closed, and don't speak with your mouth full. Ask people to pass items you cannot reach. If you have to reach over someone to get it, you can't reach it. Cut food one bite at a time, and only eat one bite at a time. Sit up straight, and keep your elbows off the table. Use your napkin to delicately wipe your face. Say excuse me before leaving the table. Don't take a sip of your drink until you have finished chewing. 5. Give generously and offer a helping hand. Being a lady doesn't have anything to do with how nice your house is, what kind of car you or your parents drive, or how much money you have. Instead, being a lady, like being a gentleman, has to do with your kindness and character. Donate old clothes to charities. Stay active in your community. Get to know your neighbors. Help out if you see someone in need, even if it's just helping a young child across the street safely. Welcome new people who move into your neighborhood. 6. Volunteer and donate. Not everyone has the resources to give money to charities, but a good cause always needs people who can lend a hand. Volunteerism is a great way to get involved, meet new people, help out in your community, and it will show prospective employers that you are dedicated and generous. Food banks are in need of helping hands and food year-round, not just around the holidays. Help out on weekends if you can, or talk to your school about organizing a food drive. Spend time with the elderly. It can get lonely at home, in the hospital, or at a care facility, and elderly citizens often appreciate having someone to talk to, play games with, or just spend time with. Check with your local animal shelter to see if there are tasks you can help with. Find something you are passionate about and research charities and organizations that you can volunteer with. 7. Offer your knowledge or expertise to those who need it. This can be as simple as tutoring fellow students in subjects you excel at, or helping friends study for tests and exams. Help younger children in your school or community who are learning to read and write. Become pen pals with a few of them so they can practice these skills. 
Provide lessons to older people in your community who want to learn to use computers or other technology. Teach younger children how to play a sport you are good at, or help out a coach in your community. 8. Know how to carry a conversation. Talking to strangers can be difficult, but you will get comfortable the more you do it. Give others a chance to talk, and if you get stuck for something to discuss, ask a couple questions. People like to talk about themselves, and it's polite to show genuine interest in what they say. 1. Of the most important aspects of carrying on a conversation is your ability to listen. Try to find hobbies that you share that you can discuss. Keep apprised of the news and world events. This is important for your own knowledge, but these subjects also come up in conversation frequently. Speak slowly, clearly, and eloquently, avoid curse words, contractions, and slang. Knowledge is key, the more you know, the more likely you are to find common ground with strangers. Avoid boring or negative topics that might bring down the mood of the conversation, such as death, war, violence, or drugs. Keep things light. 4. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit tips. Don't let other people define you. This means knowing who you are inside and out, and not letting friends or family make that decision for you. Never stop learning, and always strive to be a better person. Ideas about femininity, and masculinity, and what it means to be a lady are always in flux. Think about it like fashion, clothing comes in and out of style because people's tastes evolve, and their ideas about clothes change. The same is true for being a lady. Because what it means to be feminine is something that people decide. Submit a tip.